Right, so welcome to our crowdfunder session today. We've got Bertie who's going to be talking through the best way to set up a crowdfunder, what, uh, how to then promote it, um, and some ideas about some of the, uh, the, the projects that really make the most of that opportunity. This is part of the Croydon Funding Club sessions, and I will be sharing this online um, along with other presentations from other funders and other ideas about how to just make the most of your supporters um, and, the, and the way they want to get involved with you. Um, so basically, I'm going to hand over to Bertie and then there'll be opportunities for questions and <clears throat> we'll go from there. So welcome, everyone. Hi, Bertie. Superb. Thank you, Hilary, and welcome, everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Bertie Hertage and I'm from the Crowdfunding Coach. I am uh, someone who is promoting education about this method of fundraising uh, within the third sector. So it's my aim that all of the, the kind of voluntary community and social enterprise organizations understand what it is and how they could employ it to great effect. Um, and I've listed, uh, of course, Freud and Voluntary Action here on my uh, first slide because they are setting up this this workshop today and also crowdfunder uk because that is the platform that i recommend and that i work with closely um, and will feature quite a lot in this presentation so for those that are with me today this is absolutely interactive um, so feel free to jump in as much as you like and um, the recording of course will be made available should anyone else like to watch it but we'll be covering these kind of areas, introduction to crowdfunding to help you understand the concept and demystify it, planning, creating and running your project, which are the three key stages to running a successful campaign. And as you'll find out, a successful crowdfunding campaign is all about the preparation. So introducing the subject of crowdfunding. Where does it sit amongst the range of funding options and revenue streams for voluntary community and social enterprise organizations? So typically you might um, be familiar with or, the exist, uh, or existing on a diet of, of grants at the moment, or it could be that you're applying to various different local authorities or um, opportunities to get some finance to support your development. Uh, lots of third sector organizations are being encouraged to reach for loan investment, um, social investment in the form of debt. So uh, taking out a, a loan from a, a bank and repaying it. But it's my view that with so many VCSE organizations, um, very kind of new and fresh, in fact, with 100,000 100, social enterprises in the UK, 47% of them are under five years old. So they are establishing themselves and developing their, their revenue streams. And in the majority of cases, I believe, don't necessarily have the, the revenue to support any debt. So in fact, social investment might not be that useful. But the other incomes you look at, you could be uh, trading, so you have a range of products and services uh, that support your your community and your development. You might um, tender for for government contracts, and crowdfunding is what we're here to talk about today, uh, which is a way of raising money from your community, from those that are interested in in your project, those that you know, and reaching further beyond those areas, and. It's my belief that, that crowdfunding has a really important role to play in the development of your organizations, because with less grants available, unsuitability of social investment, and really a digital deficit in many of these smaller organizations who aren't um, always able to promote themselves online and market what they're doing and telling their story, crowdfunding presents this networking opportunity uh, to, to raise money by celebrating your story, developing new content and accessing potential match funding opportunities. So the money that is available 
from local authorities goes further and we can show corporations uh, where their money should be spent. So what is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding is raising money online in relatively small amounts from lots of different sources. And the type of crowdfunding we're speaking about today is donations and rewards. So crowdfunding enables people to donate to your organization because you're doing something good in the world, um, they believe in you, and they're not expecting anything in return. But rewards-based crowdfunding enables you to offer a benefit of some kind in return for a financial contribution. So if you're, let's say, a social enterprise that runs a bakery um, employing people who have been out of work for a long time, um, then you might offer some of the products and services, the baked goods, a baking workshop experience, a uh, discount of the products in store, um, a digital recipe cards, many, many such things which will allow people to offer or contribute more towards your campaign. Um, so the reason why we offer rewards is because it increases the amount of the average donation because without rewards, the average is about £20, whereas with rewards, the average is increased to £50. So it enables us to raise more from our crowd. And there are a variety of different platforms which uh, I think use crowdfunding, um, some of which will be very familiar to you. And they all do very much the same thing, but also, um, I suppose, operate in different areas at the same time. So Crowdfunder UK is a donation and rewards based platform. Um, it is, I'd say, has the broadest range of projects, everything from social enterprise, community groups, charities, businesses, sports clubs, films, magazines, much more besides. Um, it is a, I suppose, a, its unique selling point is that it has match funding opportunities baked into it. So part of its business model is to work with different local authorities and corporations who've got particular pots of finance that they want to distribute to community projects. And Crowdfunder allows you as a project owner to apply directly to these funds and have them land on your page to help you get to your target. Space Hive is better known for civic projects. So anything that's focused around the built environment, particularly in London, um, might attract a, a Space Hive campaign. Kickstarter um, is particularly for creative projects. So you might expect the, the latest games or board games, um, films to be on Kickstarter. Indiegogo is for tech related uh, projects. So entrepreneurs who are perhaps releasing a new iPhone case and raising money to do so through Indiegogo. Just Giving is a very kind of much charity driven uh, portal. It's donation only. And you would expect to see it at the London Marathon, for example, raising money for Cancer Research UK. Um, it's a, a simple way that individuals usually can raise money for their charity of choice. And GoFundMe is for personal fundraising. So typically, if you want to achieve something yourself um, or you're raising money for vet bills or an emergency, then you particularly use GoFundMe. So how does crowdfunding work? I suppose um, crowdfunding has grown in popularity a great deal in the last 15 years. So this kind of tongue in cheek slide, I suppose, is becoming less and less common in the preconceptions of how people believe that crowdfunding works. Because typically, a lot of people think crowdfunding is a golden ticket idea where you have a, an idea, you put it on the Internet and there's a community of people uh, looking to fund you. So that is not the case. So crowdfunding it requires a lot of hard work and preparation. And like anything, anything worth doing requires a bit of elbow grease. So the reality of how crowdfunding works is broken down neatly in this slide showing the different steps. So you'd add your project. That is uh, enables you to create a page telling your story of who you are, what you're doing, why it's important and how it's going to happen. Uh, you will set a target of what you want to reach and a timeline limit in which to reach it. And the average campaign on Crowdfund UK is four weeks. So it's a very short and sharp funding exercise. You'll add a range of rewards that you can 
offer in return for people's financial contributions. You're going to research your audience and network and supporter base before going live. So there goes the kind of the misconception of crowdfunding. Uh, there's a, not an audience ready, ready waiting to support you. The skill in a good crowdfunding campaign is the, the desktop research to make lists of different individuals, organizations, businesses, local media opportunities, community groups, all who have got a shared interest in promoting or financially supporting your campaign and accessing them and making a, a plan to reach them. And that's really what creating a marketing plan is. It makes my sna sound snazzy, but really that's just a one to 28 day timeline with a range of activities booked in every day to support uh, the promotion of your campaign. Um, you'll launch your project, and once it's live, you're going to share your page with your network you've identified and implement that strategy of who you're going to promote it to across that 28 day period. And once it's closed, and you've reached your target, you're going to uh, thank your supporters and deliver any rewards that have been pledged on. So it's actually a really simple um, process and I think the, the preparation part of it enables you to feel really confident about the, the work ahead. And the actual process of just adding a project helps you answer a lot of the questions that you might have along the way. So why crowdfund? This is so important because crowdfunding is more than just raising finance. Really, it is validation for what you're doing. If you can get a community of people to support your project, 100 supporters, 1,000 supporters, then that's a clear demonstration to everyone that there is a need, a demand, a want of this service in their area. And we know that crowdfunding is a marketing exercise. So the natural product of running a campaign is that you'll raise awareness about your organization and what you're doing. So you can't help but treat it as a very social ex exercise where you network and you meet lots of different people that could be invaluable for your campaign now, but could be a partner or uh, be important to your organization long into the future. So it gives us that opportunity to start those conversations and really, really talk to people about what we're doing and finding out how people can get involved and help us. So crowdfunding is very much uh, driven by a strong advocation uh, and uh, feeling for support of your, your project. So we find that people who support crowdfunding campaigns are actually in it for the long haul. The benefit of this crowdfunding process is that you have access to all of the data at the end of the campaign in a very GDPR specific format, which will let you know exactly who you can contact in the future and include in your marketing approach. But Crowdfunding is about backing people, supporting people, asking for help and celebrating what we're doing. So naturally, it instills a great deal of pride in those who support your campaigns and they can be relied on really to support you further later down the line. And learn new skills. So particularly with smaller organizations, you can treat this as an accelerator program. You're going to learn how to tell your story, how to market yourselves, how to uncover your audience, how to network within your community, investigate the use of rewards to uncover perhaps new revenue streams that you could use beyond your crowdfunding campaign, and uh, much more besides. So this whole process, while it is a lot of work and requires your attention, by the end of it, you're going to have some really good ideas that you can incorporate into the development of your organization moving forward. And of course, extra funding, which is uh, otherwise known as match funding, which we're going to talk a lot about today, because now there are some incredible opportunities out there. Um, it doesn't happen often, but really a lot of different funding opportunities have coincided at the moment, making it very, very um, exciting for the VCSE organizations. So who can crowdfund? The good news is crowdfunding the science behind it, the process behind it is exactly the same for any type of campaign. So whether you're a charity, uh, a social enterprise, a filmmaker, sports club, you know how to crowdfund for one, you know how to crowdfund for them all. And crowdfunding, it is inherently about presenting 
the challenges that we are faced with as a society and promoting you, the voluntary organizations, which are finding the positive solutions to these challenges and celebrating that and getting people involved and making them aware of the wonderful things that are happening on their doorstep. So some good examples of these uh, in Croydon at the moment, there's a campaign uh, from the Croydon Climate Action Group uh, called Trees for Croydon, which is essentially to, to plant trees in all areas around um, the Croydon area and to, I suppose, present a healthier, wilder, uh, nature-driven um, approach to improving the, the local area and everyone's connection to, to the environment around them. Um, they have raised nearly £10,000, um, half of which is match funded from the British Airways uh, Better World Community Fund, which we'll be talking about later. So you can see that they're, they've actually intended to raise for just £5,000, but they've actually raised nearly 200% of their target um, with a hundred use of 128 supporters. So it's just a good example of how the match funding out there is going to really kind of accelerate uh, your fundraising capabilities. And we're actually really lucky to be joined by a member from Willow CIC because we've got an example of uh, their campaign back in 2021. Um, Willow Community Champions uh, to help people with learning disabilities feel valued, improve their mental health and lead fulfilling, happy lives. And this organization provides lots of different opportunities with learning people, learning, people with learning disabilities um, through the, the development of work experience, community engagement, activities uh, to help build in confidence and create a more inclusive community within Croydon. And they raised £10,000 back in 2021 from 85 supporters. And they, they did that without any match funding, which is incredible. So with the amount of match funding available at the moment, that could be up to £30,000 or something around, around those lines. So it's a, a great example, um, as is the Grangewood Park Edible Gardens project, which similarly was back in 2021. Um, this was to take Grangewood Park and to provide a community growing space within the park, um, focused on edible and usable plants, which we located um, in the park. Um, but they raised £2,000 from 90 supporters, but so a relatively small amount. But I think based on the number of supporters they got was kind of a clear demonstration that even at a very kind of low entry point, they're able to include quite a wide range of uh, the Croydon community to support them. So why do people support a crowdfunding campaign? This is a really important uh, point to understand before you get started. Um, because it's um, important to us psychologically really uh, get to grips with what motivates people in these areas. So it falls into three different things. They like your idea. They think it's doing something good in the world. So they're happy to donate. They want to support you as an individual. So perhaps they recognize you, they're familiar with you, or they're a friend, family member, colleague. They want to support you. So the people who run the campaigns need to be front and center to create that kind of relatability. Um, or they want the reward that's available. So it could be just a transactional agreement where there's a particular reward that they want and uh, the fact that they can support you and get the reward in their return is a dual motivation um, to, to back your campaign. So it just means that you've got to have a clear idea which demonstrates the social benefit that attracts the donations. You have to be visible on your page uh, so that people can support you if they recognize you. And you have to include kind of rewards and think hard about what people want. Um, and this could be anything from products and services that you offer yourself, or it could be talking to local businesses and see if they're able to contribute uh, possible rewards to assist in um, the enticement of supporting your campaign. So what makes a good crowdfunding project is a combination of these ingredients, a team behind you, a strong network and a convincing story. So 
a team really is a loose phrase, I think, for anyone you can rope in to helping you in a little kind of bits each time on your campaign. Whether someone offers to make a video or um, take some photos for your page, someone who volunteers, someone who runs the organization. The aim is to try and get as many people involved as possible because we know that the more people we're, that are involved, the more uh, or greater network we have access to. So it's really kind of useful to have a, a larger team to help with um, the initial phase of promoting the campaign to friends and family because we know that by no stretch of the imagination, each of us knows 10 more people. So if you've got 10 people that you can bring in to support you on the campaign, then you know that the, if there are 10 within your team, then there's a potential to get 100 people um, just between you. And of course, uh, network. So we know that crowdfunding just doesn't happen by posting it online. Therefore, we research the network. And that's what I'll teach you how to do is understand exactly who will support your campaign and how to reach them. And breaking down your audience into the groups, individuals, businesses, organizations, media uh, that are interested in what you're doing and will either share or offer to make a contribution. And of course, a convincing story. So crowdfunding is like any other financial transaction online. People won't support you if there's no information about what you're doing. So it has to have a detailed description, a very clear painted picture of who you are, what you're doing, why it's important and why people should help. So the story is important and for all organizations, it's a good opportunity to really kind of just still what you do and um, make sure it's as kind of inspiring, concise, interesting and, um, and engaging as possible. Bertie, can I just uh, jump in with something yeah, sure. that has, has occurred to me, looking at your examples, actually, um, and in terms of the work that you're talking about going into creating this network and, and getting the message out there. So the a couple of the examples you used there where they'd had successful crowdfunding, we've quite recently launched the Croydon Community Lottery for organisations excellent free opportunity for supporters to, to buy tickets and be part of a, a lottery. Two of those organizations you just talked about are almost at their target for selling their lottery tickets. And now I know why, because they'd already built up that network. And then straight away, here's another uh -huh. online funding opportunity, and they could make use of it straight away. So just in terms of before people are, are sort of thinking, oh, this is so much work. But once you've done it, it gives you such a great starting platform for lots of other opportunities as well. Oh, that's so um, well put. And I, I absolutely agree. It, it's, it's simply any fundraising is, is um, a good experience and it's just the same process. All you're doing is, is reaching out to people and contacting people. So the more I think people get familiar with this, as we know that these digital fundraising um requirements are not going away there's something that we want to become better at and um if you can kind of use your team and use yourself to invest in that process with your time then it's going to continue to to, to help later and pay dividends with other opportunities for sure so when not to crowdfund because it's of course won't suit everyone um but I believe that you shouldn't crowdfund if you're too busy, if you don't have the time set aside to concentrate and I think value the, the campaign itself, then it's probably not the right idea. So if you don't have a, a lack of, if there's a lack of planning and time set aside to, to put it together, um, I mean, you can't just sling it up overnight and, and hope it, it funds itself. If there's an unclear or unconvincing story, I see pro projects all the time that have about this much text, no images, um, no possible way of finding out more about the organization and therefore no credibility, which fail. Um, if there's no obvious public or support or benefit, then it's unlikely to succeed. Um, and just relying heavily on one group or source of funding. Um, the kind of 
importance when it comes to crowdfunding is to have as mu a multiple of sources. That's what it is. We defined it earlier as a, an online method of fundraising where you're raising money from a multiple of or variety of different sources in relatively small amounts. So we want to try and get as many supporters as possible. And, and therefore, that is when the network experience and the, the mapping of our audience is really valuable because we're trying to get commitments of people to, to share the page or make a financial contribution um, rather than just expecting kind of one group or one person to, to fund the campaign. So we're gonna jump into the three key stages of, of preparation, um, which include planning, creating, and running your project. So in planning your project, I appreciate that I've kind of, may have offered a lot of information at you um, so i think i find it helpful to break it down into these four key areas essentially what you're doing is you're creating a page um, it's it's useful not essential to make a video because it's a reflection of your story in another creative medium that people might relate to you want to identify your network before you launch and you want to make a marketing plan so you know what you're doing to promote the campaign across each day uh, during which you're live. So four bits of work, create a page, make a video, identify your network before you go live and make a marketing plan so you know what you're doing across the four weeks that you're crowdfunding. So the network map is the most experience, um, I think the most important exercise because putting the page together is easy. Um, I think the, the, the page is just probably a, a resource that you've actually got the information for already. Um, you've got websites, you've got um, social media pages, you've done previous grant applications. So the information is there to fill in the who, what, why and how of your organization. But this is the, the more important exercise because it takes time. And the sooner you start it, the better you'll be. And the network map isn't to be done in just in an hour's time. It's something you, you scratch away at um, as you proceed through that preparation period. So you share it with your team. You spend a little bit of time on it to, uh, to have ideas, to research other organizations and individuals who can support you. So you keep it metaphorically in your, in your back pocket. So it's something that you keep coming back to and developing and growing and growing so that before you start your campaign, you've got a long list. And uh, this exercise just shows you that you want to have lists of friends and family, any existing supporters through newsletters and databases, any local media opportunities that you think would be interested in your campaign, key local people, uh, headmasters, mistresses, MPs, um, community leaders, businesses, every business has a, um, a, media, a social media or a network of their own. So if it's a community campaign uh, that benefits the area, therefore it would benefit the business and they may see the value in sharing your, your, your campaign or offering a reward. So you want to make a list of them and request promotion. Social media groups. So it's human nature. What we do best is group ourselves based on our, uh, our interests. So you want to uncover the different Instagram accounts, Facebook accounts, which uh, are concerned with your subject matter. So if you're running perhaps the, uh, the trees project in Croydon we talked about, then you would also look at gardening centres. You would look at gardening groups. You look at um, nature, uh, wildlife, um, support for animals and um, and. I suppose, investigate all of the, the environmental types of group that might exist because you know that there's an association with what you're doing and therefore four people might be interested in it. You want to get involved in those social media groups by contacting the page admins and seeing if they'd interest, be interested in sharing your campaign. And partners. So if you've got any um, agreed partners, perhaps you could include Croydon Voluntary Action as your starting one. Um, but anyone who has been on your journey with you um, or assisted you at some point um, may be able to promote the campaign. And of course, your team. So get your team thinking really hard. Um, however, I think busy you are or they are, 
everyone can spend five minutes making a list of 10 people um, and giving some ideas as to who might support the campaign and who you can approach. So if you're interested in the crowdfunding, then I'll share my interest, my uh, email at the end of the session. And um, I'm very happy to, to share with you one of my uh, best crowdfunding resources, which is a, a network mapping spreadsheet. Um, and it's just an easy way of organizing all of the contacts that you have and putting in a plan to, in place to reach out to them and follow up. Um, because crowdfunding, of course, um, it does require some, um, some chasing up and following people um, to see if we can get the commitment from them. Um, because with crowdfunding, of course, you've got this great idea, but you're, you're coming kind of out of the blue towards people and you're not at the top of their agenda. So you have to follow up with people to, to remind them to get back to you. Um, and there's the value of the, the networking process. Um, but I think the, this is something that's invaluable for any organization beyond the crowdfunding, because it's essentially a, a networking process which will get you talking to all of the relevant people um, who are going to help your organization progress. So crowdfunding is a marketing exercise. And if you have neglected your social channels in the, in the past, then this is a good opportunity to, to develop them. Um, and I believe crowd, with social media, it's just something you should start. Um, it doesn't matter uh, if you're not being regular, it, starting somewhere is important. And therefore, you want to follow those relevant to your project, become in, active in those groups associated with your subject that you're addressing, and research those individuals and businesses that reflect and share your own aims as an organization. And that will help you really get a sense of what conversations are happening and how you can present your project as an important part of that. So second section, creating your project and how to tell your story. So I've got a, a crowdfunding link that I can share with you if you'd like um, me to track your progress. Um, but the good news is that setting up a project page is very easy. So it just involves all of the information about uh, who you are, what you're doing, um, the social media accounts you have access to. And you'll see here that there's just various different steps. It's absolutely free to start. There's no uh, obligation to go live. So you should absolutely start one now if you can um, and develop it as you go. Keep coming back to it, do a little bit of work on it each day um, to make sure you've got the everything in place before your live day. Um, but there's lots of different videos on there to support you. Um, and there are little hints and tips on the way to, to help you get a sense of the information that's required. So we're going to talk about match funding opportunities now. So we know that there is a cost of living crisis at the moment, and therefore people might have less finance to uh, support you with. And therefore it's even more important that where money is being made um, in corporations, that it's circulated back into local communities. And match funding opportunities can be a complete game changer because they not only help your organization um, raise more money, but it's a motivation for other people to support your campaign if they see that their actual, their donation of 10 pounds is actually worth 20 or uh, that it's going to be supported beyond their, their own um, contribution. So, the first one is the Aviva Community Fund. And this is a big fund, the biggest one at the moment. It's up to 50,000 pounds match funding. So essentially a, you, the, the opportunity there is to raise up to uh, 100,000 pounds where you raise 50,000, they give you 50,000. Um, but of course, that those are only suitable for the projects that have got the resources, I think, to to raise 50,000. So, um, but it's anything up to them. So even if you just wanted to raise a thousand pounds, then you could get matched for a thousand pounds up to 50, 50,000. But it supports two different criteria. Projects that uh, promote financial well-being. 
So helping people take control of their well-being by giving them the tools to be more financially independent and ready for anything. And the next one is climate action. So promoting healthy, healthy thriving communities by preventing, preparing for and protecting against the impacts of climate change. So two quite broad criteria there. So you might have seen the David Attenborough documentary on the BBC, um, the, uh, the Wild Isles, it was called. And there has been an addendum to the Aviva Fund since called the Save Our Wild Isles Community Fund, um, which is a match funding opportunity of a further £5,000 for your project if you're promoting education about the environment in your area or encouraging biodiversity. So there's quite a lot going on in the nature space at the moment. The latest and greatest funding opportunity is from British Airways. So this is the BA Better World Community Fund, supporting communities to create a better world. It's up to £15,000 match funding and it's incredibly broad. So it's for voluntary organisations, charities and social enterprises who are improving their community, which I think is, I think this most um, straightforward criteria that you can imagine. Um, so do have a look at that. Um, and really the opportunity is you can get all of these funds. They're not exclusive of one another. A good crowd funder will be able to see what opportunities there are, apply to each one, to ensure that they've got this great opportunity of match funding. And I can certainly help with that. And lastly, but not least, if you've got an active project or sports related project, there's further match funding opportunities. So Sport England active together up to £10,000 to help sport and physical activity sector recover, reinvent and build resilience. And then places and spaces up to £10,000 again, community sport and physical activities groups looking to create, enhance or redevelop sport facilities for the benefit of their community. So two active funds. Uh, so if there is any active elements in what you're doing, then these could be a good opportunity for you too. So collectively, there's a lot of match funding available. So what have we got? So when you're running a crowdfunding campaign, um, you might be familiar with these three, well, two terms, because you get to choose the funding method that best suits your, your campaign, one of which is called all or nothing, which means you set a target and you have to hit it. If you don't, the money's refunded to your supporters. So it's therefore suitable as a way of incentivizing people to pledge uh, because of the jeopardy. Uh, it is suitable for those people who need a specific amount of finance. Perhaps they need an uh, exact amount of money to be able to deliver their services. Um, but it's also really, from my point of view, sometimes a sensible option to make sure that organisations are realistic about their target, because it's very easy to set a, a, a target at 100 or 200,000 pounds and be way off. So um, it encourages a bit of realism. And um, if you as a project owner are, are aware that you might lose it if you don't set the right target, it can be a good incentive. And then the other option is flexible funding where you set a target and even if you don't hit it, you keep whatever you raise, uh, which is also very common. So setting the target is a balancing act between what is realistic from your crowd and what is needed to make the project happen. You always start with the minimum needed and plan to overfund because even with the all or nothing context, once you hit your initial target, it's treated as flexible funding. So the fees, good news, Crowdfunder UK does not charge um, a platform fee for non-for-profit campaigns. So typically it usually has a 5% fee, but for, for your organizations, it's 0%. Um, and, but you do have to pay a, a Stripe fee. Stripe is the payment provider that manages all of the transactions. Um, this is just taken off the total of what you raise um, before the money is sent back to you. And the money is sent back uh, for a successful campaign. You'll receive it within seven working days of your project closing. Um, 
but the strike fee is 2.4% of your target, 20 pence per pledge plus VAT. So let's say um, if you're uh, if you're raising uh, 10,000 pounds, then 2.4% would be uh, about 240 pounds. That would cost you. So setting your targets, a few do's and don'ts. The target should be as realistic as possible. You start with the minimum you need and make a plan to overfund. Make sure you account for the fees and the cost of giving rewards. Lock down key pledges ahead of your live date. So speak to people about what they can support you with before you go live so that you actually have a really good idea of where the money is coming from and therefore filled with confidence about what a good target should be. Have a grasp of where the first 25% will come from. I think a good measure of whether you've chosen the right target is if you can identify 25% before you launch your campaign because we know that crowdfunding doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen just online for the sake of it. So it requires hard work. And if you can identify that 25% before you launch, that I think is the proof, the financial proof uh, needed that the campaign is going to be a success. So you don't choose a huge target without a plan to back it up and you don't send a project out to your entire audience on 0%. So what you need to do is identify that first 25% before you go live get that on the page early doors. And you want to get your first 100 supporters on the page in the first few days. Um, and this is what we call the social proof, uh, which convinces people that there's a community behind your campaign and therefore they're more incentivized to get involved. Um, and the financial proof is uh, the credibility we get from the 25% landing on the page quickly, which shows that it's gonna be successful and therefore attracts more people. A good way of working out your target is looking at the averages. So we know that a rewards-based campaign, the average pledge on a crowdfunding campaign is 50 pounds. So if you divide your target, let's say you want 10,000 pounds by 50, you need 200 supporters. So 200 people pledging 50 pounds. And we know that one in 20 or 5% of the people who view your page will make a pledge. So if you multiply your supporters by 20, that gives you 4,000, which means that would be the traffic you'd need to achieve that kind of, of finance. So 4,000 people landing um, on your page would be 5% of that would be 200 people who would go on to, to contribute on average 50 pounds to help you get to your target of 10,000 pounds. But of course, with a match funding opportunity, that would be... If you raise 5,000 from the crowd, you don't need 100 supporters, and then you'd get the, the remaining 5,000 from a match funder. So it just helps you and assists you, allowing you to actually use smaller groups of people to get funded. So we'll just have a look at a page to give you a really good idea of what a, a campaign page looks like. This one is called Help Us Give Books to Croydon's Young Readers put by the National Literary Trust um, in Croydon. And the project aim, we'll click through to the page itself. The project aim is children are growing up in Croydon without any books of their own. Help us give them books and inspire them to love reading. In 2020, they raised 6,200 pounds from 40 supporters. Um, and you can see they've got a video here, which really is just two minutes long, it's a reflection of the information on your page, but with a bit of personality behind it. You can see here that their Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, uh, sorry, Instagram accounts are linked up. Their supporters are listed here below. And this is their page. So you've got clear titles. You've got visual images which paint a clear picture about the, the project and the who's involved. And you can just see that this is a great page because it's broken up. It's, you have bold parts, clear titles, images, so that it's got facts and figures and you can see the team there. So it's got a lot of credibility behind it really. 
and um, I think is very well put together and very clear. So for anyone looking to raise uh, money, definitely use this model as your template so that you can put just as good one uh, together as they did. On the raw rewards side, they've just got a range of rewards on, on this part. So £20, give a child three books. £50, give three books to three children. Uh, £100, storyteller visit. For £100, you could pay for a storyteller session to accord, accord in school to help bring books to life for the pupils. Um, a thank you message for £150, personalised thank you message. A case study. So you'll receive a, a case study for your website, which outlines the impact your contribution has made. A thank you video um, and visit the school you sponsor. So um, enabling the businesses or corporates to come in and uh, take part in some volunteering, volunteering opportunities in the delivery of the program. So that is a really good project page um, and well worth having a look at in, um, in your own time. So when it comes to the rewards, we just looked at a few different ones, but this is part of the, the process. So you actually can run a donation only campaign. You don't need rewards, but we know that useful because we can leverage more finance from them. So they form into four categories. You've got products and services, experiences and events, sponsorship and membership opportunities and general thank yous so really it's a good opportunity to think about your organization and what your trading elements are so do you offer products can you use them as a uh, an incentive to uh, pledge on your campaign are there any local businesses in your area that can donate rewards local artists individuals can you sponsor someone through your support program um, is for the kind of list is endless and I know a lot of organizations find this challenging and we can help you with this and it is just requires a bit more thought and collaboration within your team to get some ideas going don't worry if you can't think about any now but you can come back to it and develop these as you go Okay, last section before we'll open the floor to some questions. So this is running your project. So this is a really good tip. Think about the minimum and the maximum. And this is the scale at which people can support you on your campaign. And we believe that everyone has a potential role to play in a crowdfunding campaign. And the project owner's role is to find out what their contribution will be. And these conversations you need to start before the live date. So there's three different ways people can support you. They can share the project um, on their social media, or on their newsletter, or on their mailing database. Um, they could send it to their family group on WhatsApp or a friend on Instagram. They could offer a reward uh, if it's a business or an individual, or they could make a financial contribution. So. We know that a community projects are doing the important work to tackle society's challenges. And so therefore, everyone hopefully has a role to play in your campaign, at least the minimum being they could share it or they could make a financial contribution. So that is what you want to, the mindset you want to have when you're going into all of these conversations. And the marketing campaign is really just a timeline one to 28 days and just try and book in a range of promotional activities maybe or you've got some instagram posts uh, a message on your your new your newsletter going out on the first day maybe on the second day you've got a uh, a local sports club sharing your message and the the local newspaper uh, maybe on the third day you do another instagram post and you've got five other businesses who are also promoting it on their social media it just ensure that you've locked in these commitments from the individuals and partners that you've you've spoken to i.e share the page offer a reward or make a financial contribution on specific dates across that four-week period in which you're live so that 
you can be sure that it's being promoted and that people are continually landing on the page. So a few last pointers for you. You want to invest as much time as you can in the process. The more preparation you do, the more confident you'll feel and the more success you'll have. Crowdfunding is a social exercise, so you can't do it in isolation. You've got to talk to people. The more personal and direct your approach, the better your result. So don't try and do just big kind of general emails to everyone. Try and be specific and contact people directly. And there isn't a community of people shopping the internet for campaigns to support. No promotion means no page visits and therefore no pledges. So you've got to get it out there. And we don't want to rely on just one group or individual to fund a campaign. So we've wrapped up in an hour with time to questions for questions. But uh, do follow me on Instagram for more crowdfunding tips. You can find me at the underscore crowdfunding coach. And if you're interested in support with your campaign and help, then you can email me directly at bertie at the crowdfunding coach dot org. But perhaps I'll invite Hillary back and together we can share any questions that you might have um, about crowdfunding. Um, great, thank you, Bertie. Um, yeah, there were some really good specific things in there that I think I, I found very helpful there. Good, yes, good. Um, just change my view. Do you want to? If you want to stop sharing the screen, and then we'll sort of open up a bit. Yeah, there we go. Um, yes, several different things that popped up. I mean, obviously the match funding opportunities. That's really fantastic. So I'll look into those a little bit more and share some of that around the whole network um but i think also the thing that's jumping out at me is that keeping it short and sharp and very specific which then leads me into thinking so we have the volunteer center as part of Croydon voluntary action something that we know interests people is getting involved in a very specific project to support charities you know so and also knowing the time scale. So come and be part of our team for this specific specific project that's going to last two months. This is a, our time scale. This is what we're trying to, to deliver. Because I know, thinking about some of the people who we're talking to today, that time, what time, how much time have they got to put towards this? I know they're thinking, oh, but I really need another pair of hands to help with this. Well, actually, if you've got that really nice plan, and you've worked out who you want to contact and when you want to contact and the story you're going to share with them, there is help out there. You know, we could, CVA could help you find the right person to maybe do a bit of that support. I love that idea, Hilary. That's, that's awesome. Just like you say, if you've got a particular two month period you need help with planning and running a campaign, that's a really good opportunity for volunteers to get involved with. Absolutely. Yeah. And we do know that people who are volunteering the time, if they're, if one of the things they're looking to do is build their skills and be able to demonstrate their skills around social media campaigning, it's great for people's CVs. And that often is people that are looking for work. So they don't want to be volunteering for, you know, one day a week for five years. What they want is something a bit more short, short and sharp. So, you know, that could work quite well. So that's in my mind as well. Yoga, hi, nice to see you. Got yeah, a question you. there? Yeah. Because of, uh, because of, um, um, uh, could you please share this, um, um, this one for us? The presentation? Presentations, please. Yeah. Yes, of course. Very because, happy to uh, do that. We can. I saw that one. It uh, always come to my emails, crowdfunding, crowdfunding. I don't know how to approach. We have stories. We have case studies. We have problems. We have lots of uh, projects we are running. But I don't know how to approach. So today, luckily, Hillary, you arranged this meeting. And do you know, we need some IT support also. For the grassroots funder, it's very difficult for the approaching the uh, this IT level. Yes, 
yes, in some ways, though I think, you know, what Bertie was showing us, you know, it's not the hardest thing to set up. And then I know, and yoga, this, I was pleased to see you um, on this, booked onto this, because you've got such a great community yeah. and a wide community. Yes. And if you can, and a, you're, you're an absolute case in point of where I say, you need to have a way for people to support you. So yeah. having something that is saying, this is what we need money for this time. Yeah. This is what we're looking for. And this is what the community will get from it. And you can decide if people are going to be rewarded for that. And I think that message could spread very far within the Tamil community. And people, you know, talk about sharing with friends and family. That would be an immediate network across the Tamil community in Croydon. So, you know, there's real potential. I think it's just, as Bertie says, you know, making sure that you're not leaping into this, making sure that you know who's going to do what and when they're going to do it so that it doesn't just become an idea that then trickled away. It's an idea that you really focus on. I know you've got a thousand ideas, Yoga, but put this one on the list because this, <laughs> this could be really good for you. <laughs> Thank well. you. Thank and you. we can continue to talk about it. I mean, you don't need to rush out and do this next week. Yeah. This can be part of your longer term planning. And you know, when the right person comes along who can put some time into it, that's when to go for it. You know, we can build it into your into your funding plans. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from people? No? No? Yeah. Oh, not a question. I just wanted to say yeah, that this was sure. really helpful. So thank you so much for putting this together. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Edra. Much appreciated. Thank you for coming. And that's yeah, really, really kind of you to say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, that was really specific about some things there, Bertie, but also really re realistic, which I think is important. And, you know, there's some organisations that I've jotted down that I'm thinking, right, I'm definitely going to share this recording with them because I think they're in a good position to take it on. There's others where I think, well, maybe it's not quite right just yet, mm -hmm. but that's fine as well. You know, you need to know what else is possible in the future, but go for it at the right time. Um, you very kindly said people can get in contact with you, so that's great. People here can follow up and, and possibly if people are watching this, they might be thinking, right, OK, I want a bit more specifics for, for my organisation. So I'm sure that you'll be getting some contacts from Croydon. Um, if, anything else to add at this point or we'll we'll finish up and then I'll yeah, we'll thank send you. out this information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, brilliant. Very right, well, brilliant. thank you so much. Nice to see you all. Thanks very much, Bertie. We'll Thanks, Glenny. Keep in touch, and we'll go from there. Yes. Yeah. Thank Take you. Take care, everyone. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Bye.